I'm not here denying that a trans woman is a biological male. That is true. I'm saying that letting them live their life in many ways socially as a woman is not a threat to their safe to the Even safety of others. Even if they come into my bathroom. Even if they use the bathroom next to me and my daughters, you're saying. Uh, Ali, you've probably used a bathroom alongside a trans okay, person many times. Okay, you're acting like they noticed. go incognito. Okay, like do, I, I can see. I, no, I probably haven't. I would have noticed. It's very, very noticeable. You can't, you can't always notice. Um, sometimes it's very noticeable. Sometimes it's not noticeable at all. It and I think you'd be very uncomfortable, or your daughters would be time. uncomfortable next to um, Buck Angel or somebody with a beard and muscles in the women's room. But that's the policy you're advocating for here. Brad, thanks so much for coming on on sh uh, such short notice. Okay, first, I just want you to make your case. It seems like from what I can see on X that you believe that what you would call trans women should have access to women's bathrooms, specifically as we're talking about this story in Congress. Yeah, we're talking about this push in Congress from Nancy Mace and other Republicans to specifically prohibit Congress members and workers in Congress who identify as trans women, so they're born biologically male, but they present themselves as women from using women's restrooms in particular, but also other sex segregated facilities. And I guess I just see the whole thing as a solution in a search of a problem. Basically, they've been using the facilities of their gender identity for years and years now at the Capitol. Nancy Mace has almost certainly been alongside Democratic staffers who are trans women in the washroom many times, and there's been no incidents, even when you zoom out and look across the country, instances of physical assault or voyeurism or harassment in bathrooms are incredibly statistically rare. And these gender identity ordinances that they've passed in many blue areas that allow people to use their gender identity, their preferred bathroom, those don't correspond with any increase empirically in those crimes and those offenses, according to a whole host of studies. So I view the whole thing as kind of a culture war outrage that's solving a problem that isn't really there, but would have some actually pretty messed up consequences, like forcing trans men who are biologically female, but many of whom have huge muscles, full beards, and appear as men to use the women's bathroom and to use the women's locker room. And I think that would make women uncomfortable, if not unsafe. Okay, by this logic then, do you believe that those who identify as women should be able to enter any female bathroom in any space? Or are you seeing this as a kind of isolated issue when it comes to Congress? Well, I don't think it's an isolated issue when it comes to Congress. I think it's something that clearly we have to hash out. And I think private businesses and organizations should be able to have their own rules. So I'm not saying that like at the blaze, they have to have gender inclusive toilets. Like, no, it's your, I'm a libertarian. It's your building. You should be able to have whatever policies you want. But generally speaking, I think with bathrooms, there is no need for this strict sex segregation of banning trans women from women's restroom and forcing trans men who appear male in, in many cases and pass as men into women's restrooms for bathrooms. I think locker rooms or nude spas or other areas like that where there's exposed nudity and other things. I think is much more nuanced and complicated and I think worthy of a different conversation. But banning people from bathrooms, to me, again, it's just pointless and it's going to cause far more problems than it solves. So do you think that there should ever be a restriction against men going into a female bathroom? Well, I think people are more comfortable with these gender or sex segregated bathrooms, and I'm not here railing against that. But I will just point out that. And why do you think that, that is? Well, why do you think people are generally more comfortable with sex segregated bathrooms? Well, I think partially because of sex-based violence and violence right. against women, partially right. because of just the long history of, of gender separation. But I will just point out, though, that if you travel, if you go to Spain, if you go to Germany, if you go to all sorts of places, almost all of Scandinavia, you'll find public unisex bathrooms with stalls that men and women use. And it's not leading to some epidemic in sex-based crime or gender violence. In fact, in many cases, it's much lower there than here. So I, I understand that people are more comfortable. That's why I'm not saying rip up the whole system. I'm just saying allow trans people to use the bathroom they, they want to use in most cases. But you and acknowledge that the reason, one of the reasons that people are more comfortable in sex segregated spaces, and not just people, we're talking specifically about 
women because no one's really afraid. No man is really afraid of the five foot four guy or actually female with a beard because he's been on testosterone for a few years coming into his bathroom. It is, of course, women who are justifiably nervous about the six foot two guy who happens to be wearing a skirt and lipstick coming into her bathroom, not only with her, but also with her 10 year old daughter, also while she may be breastfeeding, also while she may be pumping, while she may be changing. She may be doing things that of course require privacy. That's why we have bathrooms. That's why we have stalls. She might be changing a diaper. There are a variety of very private and exposing things that women do in bathrooms. And there is a reason why we have long had sex segregated spaces. And actually you acknowledged this because of the long history of gender-based violence, of sex-based violence that has existed. And these men who identify as women, they're still men. Like there is a reason for our own sports, for our own locker rooms, for our own bathrooms. It's not because it makes men more comfortable. It's because it makes women more comfortable. And your argument is basically, it's not just that we should allow so-called trans people into these bathrooms. The other side of that is that you are saying that women should be forced to share these very private spaces with men. I really don't care what Spain does or what Germany does. We don't live here. We don't live there. We live here. And you are asking American women to sacrifice their own comfort, their own safety, and their own privacy to share a bathroom with men because it makes some men more comfortable. And I just can't get on board with that. Well, no, I understand you're not going to get on board with that, but that's not what I'm asking because I'm actually coming at it from the same goal as you, which is the comfort and safety of women. I think we have very different ideas about how to get there. Uh, I think what would make those girls' daughters uncomfortable is a burly, muscular man appearing person with a full beard coming in and washing their hands next to them in the bathroom. I don't think washing their hands next to Sarah McBride, the transgender congressperson, is going to be nearly as uncomfortable as that. And I'm not here to discount anyone's fears about safety, but I am going to point out statistical realities. And the realities of gender-based violence and sexual-based violence don't happen in bathrooms except in most vanishingly statistically rare cases. It's almost exclusively, vast majority of the time in other venues, in other situations, not from strangers harassing them in bathrooms. Well, I think so we can agree right that we are against violence. Feel, but that doesn't mean it's true. Uh, we can... Yes, that's exactly true. That's very relevant when it comes to transgenderism. There are men who feel that they are women, but they're not. And so we can't affirm an assent to their delusions by allowing them into women's bathrooms. It's not just a denial of women's privacy and safety. It's a denial of reality. And of course, you we keep don't, saying safety. We Do you don't, have any evidence yes. of that? Well, let's look at these vanishingly small statistics. I think most of us uh, would agree that we don't want violence in any context, whether it's in the bathroom or whether it's somewhere else in some other space. But I do think it's important to look at the faces and the people behind some of these insta uh, instances that you are saying are rare. For example, when we're looking at Loudoun County schools in May 2021, a boy wearing a skirt assaulted two teen girls in the bathroom at two different schools, and he was transferred multiple times for inflicting violence on these young women. Uh, these parents and these young female students, just young teenagers, had to give their testimonial of this violence of being beaten by this young man in front of the school board. According to the New York Post, in October 2022, a teen girl in Oklahoma was severely beaten by a transgender peer in the bathroom. Her mother, Teresa Gooden, reported the, uh, the crime. According to Toronto Sun in 2018, Shane Jacob Green, who identifies as trans and goes by Stephanie, was convicted of sexual assault after he dragged a 15-year-old female McDonald's employee into a bathroom stall and attacked her while she was cleaning mm -hmm. the washroom. Um, according to Metro Magazine in 2019 in Scotland, Katie... He goes by that. Uh, Dolotowski sexually assaulted a 10-year-old girl in a bathroom stall at a supermarket in 2014. So this goes way back. Um, but actually, this story is still developing to this day. This person who identifies as Hannah Tubbs admitted to sexually assaulting, assaulting a 10-year-old girl in the bathroom of a Denny's restaurant. Um, at age 26, it was agreed that he would serve time in a juvenile facility since he was a minor when he assaulted this girl. According to the Independent and March 2022, Ian Bullock, who claims to identify as female, attacked a woman in the bathroom 
of Birmingham New Street Station. And this was very easy to find. These stories are not hard to come by. They're easily searchable. And while you might say that this is rare, every single instance of one of these men identifying as a woman to enter into these very vulnerable, helpless spaces for women to assault them, they matter. And they're one too oh, many. I completely so agree if they we matter. can do anything to deter men who identify as women or men at all from entering into these very vulnerable spaces for women, I say that we should do that. Yeah, Ali. So let me be clear. Of course, I believe they matter. Of course, I believe those people should all be criminally prosecuted and put behind bars. And I feel terrible for the women harmed in all those situations. So let's not make that mistake that I don't care about that. But in the same way that it would be wrong for me to read you a list of Christian priests who've molested children and cast dispersions about all priests or say that priests shouldn't be allowed around children, the plural of anecdote is not evidence. And more broadly, to your deterrence point, it's just not true that people who will assault women or girls in violation of too many laws to count would have been deterred by different school rules about what bathrooms they could go into. You almost sound like a Democrat. But saying you that don't, gun you free don't know zones that, will man, stop mass this shootings. This boy who identified, I'm sure that if the, the boy who identified as a girl, laws, you don't care about bathroom the policies. Boy the boy who identified as a girl, gun free zones. Oh my goodness, the boy who identified as a girl and wore a skirt, according to Loudoun County policies, was allowed into women's restrooms. And of course, these girls were bullied and shamed into not saying anything because young people today are told in order to be tolerant and inclusive, you have to acknowledge that this man wearing a skirt is really a is really a girl and accept him into your spaces and so absolutely the policy had something to do with that if there are consequences there's already policies against assault they already broke policies why wouldn't they've just broken the bathroom policy alley because they were allowed in there they were allowed they were in there in the to first break place rules? but if they had been deterred if they had been given consequences in the first place for even entering into that space they wouldn't have been there Brad and i think they that you understand that someone. but again you have already acknowledged that one of the reasons for sex segregated spaces is for the comfort and the protection and safety of women in light of the history of sex based violence you have acknowledged that that is one reason why we have sex segregated spaces Spaces, you simply think that men who identify as women are the exception to that. And one other thing I want to say, because I don't believe in your analogy. Now, I'm not Catholic, and so you can't really get me with the whole like Catholic priest thing. But I, I don't think that's a good analogy because it's not only that we are saying that men who identify as women may violate these girls. I understand that not every man who identifies as a woman is going to inflict violence upon a girl or a woman. It's not only that, though. It is in violation of reality. It is in violation of the truth. I think that there is a cost to saying that two plus two equals five. Now, you could say it doesn't really hurt you. It doesn't really harm you to say that two plus two equals five. Just say it. But I believe in violation of the rules of nature and the laws of reality, I think that there is a cost to that. Not only a human cost when it comes to the safety and the protection of women and girls, but also to our ability to convene together as a society if we can't even agree that male and female exist and there are societal implications to that, especially when it comes to intimate spaces like bathrooms and locker rooms, we really don't have a leg to stand on when it comes to anything else. I do agree that male and female exist. And I think part of the problem here is that the very radical progressive view on trans issues is totally detached from reality. I'm not here denying that a trans woman is a biological male. That is true. I'm saying that letting them live their life in many ways socially as a woman is not a threat to their safe, to the Even safety of others. Even if they come into my bathroom. Even if they use the bathroom next to me and my daughters, you're saying. Uh, Ali, you've probably used a bathroom alongside a trans okay, person many times. Okay, you're acting like they noticed. go incognito. Okay, like do, I, I can see. I, no, I probably haven't. I would have noticed. It's very, very noticeable. You can't, you can't always notice. Um, sometimes it's very noticeable. Sometimes it's not noticeable at all. It and I think you'd be very uncomfortable, or your daughters would be time. uncomfortable next to um, Buck Angel or somebody with a beard and muscles in the women's room. But that's the policy you're advocating for here. I am. I am advocating for 
women and men to be in sex separate spaces. Yes. And of course, I am against someone like Buck Angel trying to change her gender and present as something that she is not. And so that's not really a gotcha to me. I do believe in sex separate spaces because I believe in the reality of sex. And you simultaneously say you believe that, but at the same time, you think they should be able to, quote unquote, live their life, even if it infringes upon the rights to privacy of women. And that is the problem. If they do anything that infringes on your right to privacy, they should, like anyone else, like a man or a woman or so a trans person or a non-trans person, So you don't believe that a woman has a right to her own pro- space. You don't believe that a woman has a right to her own space. Then you say that that infringes upon our privacy, but you're saying that I don't have the right to privacy in the bathroom. Privacy against a man, which is why we have sex-segregated bathrooms in the first place. You're saying that women really don't have that right if a man who thinks he's a woman wants to come in our bathroom. I think if that man harasses you or bothers you or peeps in the stall or does anything else, they should be arrested and criminalized. But no, I don't think you're victimized by washing your hands next to Sarah McBride. Okay, outside. like then, I, I don't. Okay, but what if it is? What if it's a man who's not wearing a skirt? What if it's a man who looks fully like a man and he comes into the women's bathroom? Should that be okay? That's the problem. It really shouldn't. That's the problem with self-ID, the progressive policy on trans issues. I think there should be a rigorous process you need to obtain a gender recognition certificate what for should tra- that process transitioning be? gender. And it's, it's relevant to, to this, this conversation. I, I want to know what should the process be to be women, uh, female enough to be able to enter women's spaces like the bathroom? In Britain, before they instituted self-ID, which is the kind of nonsense you're describing, and I agree is is absurd, where anyone can just declare the gender they feel like, they used to have to go through a process of several years of therapy and a confirmed medical dino- diagnosis of gender dysphoria, including living as their opposite sex for years before they could obtain a gender recognition certificate that would allow them to, say, use a public women's restroom. That is a process that's going to stop somebody from just putting on a wig one day and walking into the bathroom. That wouldn't be allowed, but it's not going to end up in the perverse result where people who, for all intents and purposes, appear as the opposite sex, appear as male, are forced to use the women's room. Or women's people who appear as female are forced to use the male locker room, making many little boys uncomfortable, potentially. I mean, it's just you're not concerned at all with the practical implications of the things you're suggesting. Oh, and I'm I understand very, for you very it's about concerned first principles, with the practical you implications. You, I, I don't think you are. Okay, I'm very concerned with the practical implications of a lot. We don't have we we don't have that process that you're talking about. We do have we we do. Listen, we do have self-identification right now. And so you're talking about a hypothetical one day if we have these processes to verify that man is really a woman and is not to threat a threat to women, which, of course, I completely disagree with, because, again, you have arbitrary standards for becoming the opposite gender and. Of course, that's a slippery slope, not even the uh, slippery slope fallacy. It just is because all of those standards outside of biology are going to be arbitrary. Of course, that can be exploited and abused. But regardless, we don't have that. We do have a man who grew out his hair and wears lipstick and says that he's a woman entering into women's spaces. And so what you're talking about as absurd is actually happening. And you are you talking about Sarah McBride? Yes. And you think that's okay? She hasn't gone through all of these people that you're talking about that I listed haven't gone through that process that you're saying needs to happen in order to legitimize someone's transgenderism. No, she hasn't gone through any kind of legal process in order to verify that she's really quote unquote trans. This is actually a man who is dressing up like a woman, entering into women's spaces. And again, you do not believe that women have the right to be protected against that. The other question the that public, I have... I don't think the public bathroom is an issue. Now, can I ask you a quick, quick question, Ali? In, sure. in the past five years, for example, in the Capitol, in Congress, where they've had policies where all the trans women staffers who work for Democrats are allowed to use women's public bathrooms, can you name one incident or assault that was perpetrated in the Capitol by a trans person over the last I five have, years? I have no idea. Maybe Nancy Mace would know. But well, I, I think, think if that she had, has, if she'd had one, she would have talked about it. Even, She's been very even vocal. Even if it hasn't already happened in Congress or in the Capitol building, doesn't mean that she does not have the right, that Mace does not have the right to stand up for herself. One other clarifying question that I have here is you said that you think that there should be nuance and maybe different kinds of regulations when it comes to locker rooms. Tell me, tell me why, though, because... 
You don't seem to think that this is a big issue in bathrooms where women are at least half naked. So tell me why locker rooms, if you believe that these so-called trans women should just be able to live their lives, why are locker rooms different? Because I completely understand that many women wouldn't want to be exposed to male genitalia and why, in a locker room. Why, why is that, Brad? Why? Why do because you it would make them uncomfortable. Right. So if it makes them uncomfortable for men to be in bathrooms, why isn't that enough? Well, many women, it doesn't make them uncomfortable for trans women to be in women's bathroom. Hundreds of female okay. Democratic for members many, of Congress many women, are It doesn't make them uncomfortable it. for a man to change in front of them in a locker room either. But you're saying we should, I think that's we should defer to, we should defer to the women who are uncomfortable with men changing in front of them in the locker room, right? And so why doesn't that apply to bathrooms too? Why is it different? Well, because there's not routine nudity and exposure to other people in bathrooms with stalls. It's a different situation that calls so for different roles. So you get to tell women what should make them uncomfortable and what shouldn't. No, and you sound like a woke feminist. Are you going to dye your hair pink? My opinion's Look, not I, invalid I don't think because that I'm a male. I, I, the person who believes in the reality of gender and that women should have their own sex-exclusive spaces, speaking to the guy who doesn't actually believe women have well, the you're right to that. I don't think I'm argument. the one who sounds. Yes, that's well, identity no, politics, you cite, Allie. Brad, Brad, you cited it as an argument. Do you hear yourself? You said that. I never that said the, I'm a man, so I know this. Me. Listen to me. <laughs> you said that the reason why we should not allow men who identify as women into the locker room is because women might be uncomfortable with a man changing in front of them. That was your reason, not mine. And so I'm saying women also were uncomfortable with men peeing next to them in a stall. And you're saying that's not a good enough reason to keep those men out of women's bathrooms. I'm asking you to tell me the difference. You don't know the difference, which is why you are projecting your exposed to onto nudity me. and one doesn't that's a meaningful difference and so i think you shouldn't be allowed to use a female locker room or changing room if you haven't had bottom surgery and you still have a penis i think that's a reasonable restriction to have but if women are uncomfortable in both cases you're saying one discomfort is legitimate one discomfort is not legitimate. And if you truly believe that so-called trans women should just be able to live their lives and enter the spaces that they want to, if your reason for allowing these men into bathrooms is because there's not enough statistical data that proves that sexual assaults happen in those bathrooms, then that should also apply to locker rooms. But it's a double standard. It's cognitive dissonance that you really cannot reconcile and that you haven't been able to reconcile. But you're citing female discomfort. I'm saying women are uncomfortable, rightfully so, in both spaces. Women have women a right to our to privacy. With we, have a right to, we have a right to sex segregated spaces, and that's the end of the story. And I'm very thankful Nancy Mace is pushing this, but I do appreciate you taking the time to come on. I appreciate you having these uh, spirited debates as well, Allie. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Have a good day.